The badger cull has been in the news for months. I know what Brian May thinks, I know what the president of the National Farmers Union thinks, but I want to find out what local people directly affected by the cull think. So I've come here to West Somerset to find out. This is the West Somerset Cull Zone. Its precise boundaries are a closely guarded secret, but it's a vast area. For six weeks, gunmen are going to have to kill an average of more than 60 badgers each night to hit their target of killing more than 70% of the badgers in this area. But whilst this destruction is occurring, some locals will be doing their best to keep the badgers alive. One Somerset resident invites me to watch the wild badgers in his garden. Like many badger lovers and haters in the region, he is so worried about this controversial cull, he wants to remain anonymous. It's very rare we go an evening without seeing badgers. We enjoy them and they enjoy being fed. Some farmers would be horrified to learn that you're feeding badgers and they'd call you a badger hugger and they'd probably accuse you of destroying their livelihoods. What would you say I to say them? I say they're entitled to their opinion, but I think we're all here on this planet and we should try to get on. If we can't get on, then there's something wrong with their mentality. They've been here in this area a lot longer than people have been here, and uh, I think they've got a right to be here. Another local trying to save badgers is Pauline Kidner, founder of Secret World, the biggest badger hospital in the country. We're expecting that we will get injured badgers from the Cull area. It's, it's only about 15 miles away from where we are. And we have a huge problem knowing how robust the badger is, that I think it could possibly be injured rather than killed outright. There probably will be only one thing we, we can do for them, which is to euthanise them and put them out of their suffering. We were dairy farmers ourselves. We had our own TB outbreak. We know what it's like to lose animals. We know the emotional and the financial strain of it. This is going to be wrong for farmers. All that money being spent in the cull should be fast-tracking a vaccine for, for cows. Other badger lovers in the cull zone are busy setting traps to vaccinate badgers before the gunmen move in. Now, last year I decided to get myself trained up as a lay vaccinator to vaccinate badgers against TB because I genuinely believe, and the science supports it, that by doing that until we get cattle vaccination, uh, it's a responsible thing to do. A lot of the people that I've spoken to are very, very supportive. They almost feel helpless that they don't want it to go ahead. They don't seem to be able to make the government understand. But they want to do something. And we're offering landowners and farmers cut price badger vaccination as a real alternative to culling. Isn't this an exercise in futility to go around vaccinating badgers in an area where they're all being shot by the farmers? It's highly likely that some of the badgers that we do vaccinate this year and some of the badgers we vaccinated last year will be culled. There's a real air of suspicion in West Somerset and no farmers who are in favour of the badger cull, and that's most of them, will talk on camera about it. But we finally found a farmer who will talk to us on the condition that he remains anonymous. When we bought this farm, we asked the Ministry of Agriculture, as it was then, what was the TB status, and they said there's no TB in your area. And that's been proved wrong in the last 10 years? Well, practically every farmer in the area is uh, restricted at one time or another now. If a charity like Somerset Badger Group came along to you and offered you vaccination of the badgers in this area, is that something that you would accept, or would you rather that the badgers were cold? If you look at the, the vaccination in Wales, it's an absolute nonsense. It cost two, over £2 million. Pounds. That was £660 for every single badger. And the situation now is that the, the disease incidence is worse than it was last, last year. Are you concerned that the badger cull is going to bring animal activists into West Somerset and there's going to be violence or... I'm very worried about that, yeah. I think, I think, I think uh, people do worry about it. There seems to be a hate attached to it as, as much as a belief. Do you think the farmers will prevail or do you think the animal rights guys will prevail? Certainly the animal rights are more organised. That's quite a criticism of the organisation of farming. Mm. Well, don't forget, us farmers have to work hard. You know, we work seven days a week. We don't really have the time. Are you hopeful? that a cattle vaccine well, yeah, could I mean, be the solution you know, in the future? 
For the last 25 years I've been told, oh, we're working on a vaccine for TB. Why is it oh. taking so long? Is there not the financial reward for the pharmaceutical companies to, to, to pursue it? I assumed every farmer was in favour of the badger cull, but I've come to a farm in the heart of the cull zone in West Somerset, where a farmer has a rather different view. We have Aberdeen Angus cows which come in from a dairy herd at about a week old. They're my babies, you know, so, so when you lose one of those, it's, it's very, very painful indeed. Um, DEFRA estimate that each, each breakdown costs the farmer about £10,000 and I think that's um, a conservative estimate, to be honest. We've been clear now for 18 months, but that doesn't mean anything. Next test, you can go down again. It's very insecure situation at the moment. Are you in favour of the badger cull? No, we're not. We're in, we're in favour of taking measures to reduce and eventually eradicate TB. That's what we all want. We want something effective. What methods are you now taking to protect your cattle? Well, we're vaccinating the badgers on this farm. We started last year, which has put us a year ahead of the cull anyway. It was a successful vaccination. We were very pleased. We used night vision cameras to estimate what badgers we got, and we were confident that we had a high percentage of, of catch. In fact, Penny Phillips argues that vaccinating badgers is more responsible than a cull, because scientists say that killing badgers creates perturbation, where animals fleeing the cull spread bovine TB to neighbouring farmers' cattle. The only sure thing we know about culling badgers is that there will be people who will go down with TB who wouldn't have otherwise. And that seems extremely unfortunate given that we know the costs involved of the TB breakdown.